Good morning, everyone. Good morning. This will be a turning around morning in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. That God will put whatever you need in your life, Amen. in your family, Amen. in your ministry, Amen. you will triumph in ministry. Amen. In your profession and the work of your hands everything from today even though you have been successful before you have come to a level of significance yeah. and the work of the lord and your calling will prosper in your hand yeah. father we well, thank you we know that you are here to bless your people lord jesus savior redeemer we give the glory to you and the praise to you. We know you are here to impact the life of everyone. Holy Spirit, you are here. And we are praying that you breathe on your people. Amen. Rekindle their love, Amen. their passion. And the power of the Holy Ghost will take root in every life. You will minister as God has called you and ordained you to do. We're asking, Lord, that you expound, expose your word to everyone this morning. Amen. That your word will do good in every life. Amen. Thank you, Father, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please, you can have your seat. As we begin the ministers and professional conference today, I'm taking a familiar passage of scripture, a passage you know already. We're looking at Psalm 23, the triumphant power of our all-sufficient shepherd. Psalm 23 from verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters he restoreth my soul he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil i will fear no evil somebody there i will fear no evil say that by yourself for thou art with me his name is emmanuel god with us for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me then it says thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over surely surely somebody shall surely surely goodness and mercy shall follow me how I many days all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever you notice in that psalm the pronoun i at the beginning i shall not want at the end i will dwell in the house of the lord forever you notice mine is my shepherd and it's my soul that he restoreth. It's me that he leadeth. He leadeth me. And then you see, it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. It's a personal psalm. David himself had been a shepherd. He was still a shepherd. He was shepherd over the sheep. And later he became shepherd over the nation of Israel. And he knew the dangers that sheep could have. He said, a bear came. And I held him with my bare hand. 
and I slew him. A lion came and he said, I also slew him. And then not only the bear, not only the lion, and Philistine came against, not against him, but against the nation. And because the Lord had chosen him to be the king and the leader and the ruler of the nation, Goliath also came against him. He finished them all. And then looking back, he said, I have been shepherd over the sheep and i lost none and i protected them and i preserved them and i supplied all their needs now he turned the table around he said i am the sheep now he is the shepherd and then he says the lord the creator of the heavens and the earth the creator of all things the jehovah jireh and the jehovah uh, sikeno and the jehovah rapha and the one who heals and the one who saves and the one who protects and the one who preserves that jehovah god in heaven El shaddai he is my shepherd and then he said i shall not want personal royal filial in any area of my life and my existence i shall not want and i pray that today the lord will bring you into the picture yeah. power in your life yeah. triumph in your life possibilities in your life even today as you come to the lord and you say wait a minute am i afraid i will fear no evil because the lord is my shepherd i shall not want i will not lack i will not lack as i said we're looking at this psalm we're talking about the shepherd the all-sufficient shepherd we talk about the sheep that is the one that god has taken personally to be his possession and that one will have triumphant power join everything together is the triumphant power of our all-sufficient shepherd we're looking at the psalm at this passage on three perspectives number one the plenitude when you say plenty when you say plenitude the fullness the plenitude and provision of the reigning shepherd the reigning shepherd we're talking about the god of heaven he rules the earth he reigns in heaven and he reigns in the life of everyone that is called his the plenitude and provision of the reigning shepherd number two is the privilege and protection of the righteous sheep it brings us in peter reminds us that we have come to the shepherd and the bishop of our souls he restores us he grants us salvation he grants us righteousness he grants us his very nature and now we can say it's not only provided for the body it's provided for the soul and for the spirit it's provided for the whole man and we the followers of the lord redeemed by the lord and cleansed by the lord we are the privileged protected righteous sheep in the fold of the lord number two there the privilege and protection of the righteous sheep number three our progress you will make progress every day will contribute to progress in your life and in your ministry and in your profession the progress that gets us into the paradise of rapturous splendor at the end we're expecting the coming christ at the end is what he said to that thief on the cross and said today thou shalt be with me in paradise as you are about to cross over to the other side if you have to go before the rapture takes place the lord will tell you well done come in and then you'll be with him in the eternal paradise in jesus name the progress into the paradise 
of rapturous splendor. We're coming to number one here. Number one, the plenitude and the provision of the reigning shepherd. Once again, Psalm 23, verses 1 and 2. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And then he tells us, he says, he maketh. Have you seen that? Not that he made for Peter, Paul, James, John. He maketh at the present time. In the present generation, for every child of God, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me, continuous tense. He keeps on leading me. When you were born again, he started leading and guiding you. And then you moved on. And as you are moving on, he keeps on leading you. The leading of the Lord will never stop in your life. He leadeth me beside the still waters let's look at three things in number one the preeminence of the shepherd and his sufficiency number two the proclamation of the sheep in every situation number three the pastors for the sheep of the shepherd look at number one number one is the preeminence of the shepherd nothing on earth nothing in heaven nothing in the sea nothing in the forest no spirit in the bush is above our shepherd he is above everyone he is higher than the highest and no matter what confronts your life you're going to find our shepherd is preeminent and his sufficiency there is nothing you can do to quantify his sufficiency look at that the first part of psalm 23 verse 1 the lord is my shepherd the lord is today my shepherd in the time of need in the time of scarcity in the time of problem in the time when it appears your own human resources they are all exhausted you remember at the present time the present day the lord the creator the redeemer the all-sufficient one is my shepherd it may not he may not belong to other people other people may not own him accept him but the lord is my shepherd as the lord spoke about the sheep and he said my sheep belonging to me the same way the sheep now can refer to the shepherd as my shepherd he owns me I belong to him and any time I need anything from him he is my shepherd in Psalm 80 verse 1 Psalm 80 verse 1 says give ear O shepherd of Israel is the shepherd of the whole nation of Israel and if he's the shepherd of Israel is the shepherd of the number one in that nation david at that time if he's the shepherd of the sheep of your congregation is the shepherd of number one in that congregation the minister there the pastor there he is the shepherd of your soul he'll take care of you oh shepherd of israel thou that leadest joseph like a flock thou that dwellest between the cherubims shine forth it'll shine forth in your life and then jesus christ comes to make it clear to us when he says in john chapter 10 verse 11 i am the good shepherd the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep why for the salvation of the sheep that is of the sinner why for the sanctification of the sons that he is those who belong to the lord already he is a shepherd when you come to the lord he saves you he forgives your sin he, he takes away the guilt and the condemnation and then he says don't go yet because i am when you were saved i was the good shepherd to you and now that you are saved and you are in the kingdom i am still the good shepherd when you became sanctified i am the good shepherd i 
cleanse you i purge you i purify you i make you holy why because i am the good shepherd and then as you go on in ministry when you come across a, a kind of a crossroad and you say what am i going to do the shepherd will show up you say i am here i am the good shepherd and he will see you through in every situation in jesus name Hey, look at this in verse 14 in verse 14 it says i am the good shepherd and i know my sheep wonderful i know my sheep when somebody is praying the lord looks at him he looks at the book of life he sees him there knows his name there looks at the book of life and sees that name he said yes i know you i've answered your prayer already a prayer you pray this morning the lord has answered because he knows you he knows where he has placed you he knows your calling he knows is the one that puts you there you will not lag say i will not lag we have the preeminence and the provision of the shepherd he is all sufficient hebrews chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 20 it says now the god of peace he'll give you peace that brought again from the dead our lord jesus that great shepherd of the sheep is the good shepherd for your salvation is the great shepherd for your sanctification for your holiness is the glorious shepherd the king of glory will come and when that king of glory comes he'll take you home to glory yeah. and even now you'll enjoy the glory of the lord in your life in your ministry in your profession in your family in jesus name yeah. the good shepherd salvation the great shepherd sanctification and then the glorious shepherd that the rapture he'll take you home to be with him in jesus name. it says now the god of peace that brought again from the dead our lord jesus that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant look at verse 21 through that blood he'll make you perfect yeah. we've been waiting for that for a long time we tried we struggled we adjusted we climbed we fasted we wanted to be perfect now the chief shepherd has come the great shepherd has come the sanctifying shepherd has come he'll make you perfect in every good work to do his will walking in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through the lord through jesus christ to whom be glory forever and ever amen let's look at number two here we're looking at psalm 23 the second part of verse one it says the lord is my shepherd i shall not want that word want is the old english word for lack so you can read it this way the lord is my shepherd i shall not lack I shall not lag. Now, what does that mean? For a child of God, for a minister of God, for a professional, for somebody that the Lord has taken his life over, and he says, I am your shepherd, and therefore you will not lag. The Lord is my shepherd i shall not lack can i wake up every morning and have the assurance that i will not lack can i proclaim to myself can i proclaim to everyone around me that the lord is my shepherd i shall not lack yes i can when i say that what do i mean i shall not lack ability or anointing 
the Lord calls you and then you understand he called you to succeed you will not fail yeah. I will not lack anointing I will not lack ability I will not lack abundance I will not lack blessing benefit the blessing of the day every challenge the lord calls you to there is a blessing and there is a benefit according to that the lord is my shepherd i shall not lack courage you come at a point in your life you're facing goliath and goliath is causing you causing david by his goals and then david said the lord is my shepherd I shall not lack confidence. I shall not lack courage. The Lord is my shepherd. I will not lack dominion. That's what he's saying. When it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not what he said, whatever I need. I need dominion. Yes, I do. You need dominion. Yes, you do. And the Lord, when the Lord is your shepherd, you'll have deliverance you'll have dominion the lord is my shepherd i will not lack energy energy sometimes you are called to do something and then the, the the skill is there but the energy is not there the strength is not there and then you remember the lord is my shepherd and i will not lack energy the lord is my shepherd and i will not lack the faith to pull through and to bulldoze my way through because the Lord is my shepherd. I will not lack faith. I will not lack fortitude. And I will not lack the freedom, the liberty I need to do what he has called me to do. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack grace. I shall not lack godliness. I shall not lack the goodness of the Lord after all. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. How many days of my life? All days of my life the Lord is my shepherd I will not lack his goodness the Lord is my shepherd I will not lack healing I will not lack health and I will not lack harvest he sends me to go and harvest and I know do I have uh, the result you got the result before you go to the field and you are going to have the harvest the Lord is my shepherd I will not lack holiness the Lord is my shepherd I will not lack happiness now as I said recently in Proverbs 17 verse 22 that a merry heart do it good like medicine can I have that happiness and that joy of serving the Lord yes I can because the Lord is my shepherd and I will not lack the happiness and the health and the healing and the harvest and the holiness the Lord is my shepherd I will not lack inspiration what if when I get there I'm supposed to minister and then I don't even have inspiration no you will have inspiration you will have inspiration because the Lord is my shepherd and I will not lack joy and the joy of the Lord will be your strength in Jesus name the Lord is my shepherd I will not lack the king's kindness is there any son of um, of Jonathan that can I can show the kindness of the son to him because you are following Jesus Christ kindness will be yours all the way through the king's kindness I will not lack because he is my shepherd the Lord is my shepherd and I will not lack love the love of heaven all of heaven looking at you and then bestowing all the love you need it bestows that in your life and because of that when the love of heaven follows you every day abides with you every day and there is no lack if there is no lack of love there's no lack of favor in your life goodness in your life power in your life in jesus name the lord is my shepherd i will not lack his mercy because his mercy follows me everywhere i will not lack his majesty i will not lack his mountain moving power i will not lack his miracle the lord is my shepherd i shall not lack 
nourishment you know sometimes you are edu somebody is educated and somebody has human strength but he's malnourished he's not nourished well and because of that whatever he knows and whatever he has he cannot give to anyone he cannot say i know this i know that because the man does not have nourishment but you as a child of god and the lord is your shepherd the lord is my shepherd i shall not one i shall not lack nourishment the lord is my shepherd i shall not lack opportunity every morning doors of opportunity will open for you the lord has called me for this has called me for that where is the opportunity behold i set an open door before you that no man can shut anywhere you are the help you need will come at the right time the power you need will come at the right time because the lord is my shepherd i shall not lack opportunity the lord is my shepherd i shall not lack power 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 to perform power to do power to climb every mountain power to solve every problem that comes near you the lord is my shepherd i will not lack quickening it quickens you makes you alive when other people are dull and sluggish and they're moving as if there is no power because the lord is your is your shepherd you will not lack quickening in jesus name the lord is my shepherd and i will not lack righteousness the righteousness of the lord will cover you the righteousness of the lord will be imparted and imputed unto you because the lord is my shepherd i will not lack righteousness i will not lack revelation you see there are people that go through life there's no revelation it's what they knew and what they had about 20 years ago and that's good at least they're keeping that but you know fresh revelation from the lord revelation that will put you over revelation that will make you climb every mountain and solve every problem and be able to untangle unravel whatever it is the life of anyone you are ministering to the lord is my shepherd i shall not lack revelation the lord is my shepherd i will not have i will not lack supply my god shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by christ jesus abundant supply supernatural supply sufficient supply in your life in jesus name yes my dear sister there how do i educate this boy the father is not is not available and the father is not supplying anything you will not lack supply I need to get this done and get that done. Where do I get the way without the supply to do that? The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that you may have life where are you there that you may have life and have it more abundantly supply in your life in jesus name the lord is my shepherd i shall not lack tenacity you know sometimes you hold something and as you are holding that thing you are getting weaker and then you cannot hold that in again as Satan says aha i said so i thought so i know you will not be tenacious you will not you will not be able to hold that thing till the end of life the lord is my shepherd i will not lack the top mindedness and the tenacity that will help me to keep everything the lord has given me the lord is my shepherd i will not lack unction i will not lack unction the lord is my shepherd i will not lack unction and understanding the lord will grant you understanding in jesus name the lord is my shepherd i will not lack victory as you go out today from here you are going with victory you're going with vigor the lord is my shepherd i shall not lack vigor the strength of the lord will uphold you 
and it will carry you through the lord is my shepherd i will not lack wonders wonders without number wonders every day in your life because the lord is a shepherd and that lord is the god of all wonders and because the lord is my shepherd i shall not lack wonders and then it says the lord is my shepherd i will not lack exploits exploits jesus said he that believeth on me the works i do he shall do and then he says greater works than these shall he do because i go unto the father exploits will never stop in your life the, the miracles of yesterday that God has done through you will be a stepping stone to higher and greater and mightier miracles in Jesus name the Lord is my shepherd I will not lack youthfulness youthfulness you know sometimes some people get to 50 or 55 or 60 and then their soul has retired the body is still there but the spirit has retired it's like the inner man has retired and therefore the the strength of the youth that used to be there the vision and the focus and the power of the youth that used to be there is not there anymore this morning your usefulness the lord will renew in jesus name and the lord is my shepherd I will not lack zeal. I will not lack zest. That is something within you. That every morning as you, as you come before the face of the Lord, He puts a kind of new injection into your heart, into your life. As you open your eyes like this in the morning, you're really awake. And you say, Today is the Lord, is the day the Lord has made. I'll be glad and rejoice in it. Every day, a day of joy. Yeah. Every day, a day of achievement. Every day, a day of climbing up and getting to the peak in your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. We're talking about, we're talking about the plenitude and provision of the reigning shepherd. And now the proclamation. The proclamation that the sheep himself is making and is saying this is what i have because the lord is my shepherd look at psalm 84 and i'm reading from verse 11 it says for the lord god is a son and a shield the lord will give grace and glory amen, amen. no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly look at romans chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 32 it says in romans chapter 8 verse 32 he that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all how shall he not with him is giving you christ is giving you a salvation is giving you all that he purchased on the cross of calvary how shall he not with him also freely give us how many things make it personal give me all things you receive in jesus name in second peter chapter one i'm reading from verse three second peter chapter one verse three according as his divine power has given unto us all things how many things do you have they are there in the storehouse all you need to do is ask it shall be given unto you seek and you shall find knock and it shall be open to you for everyone that asketh receiveth he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be open which man of you shall have a son if he shall give if he shall ask him bread will he give him a stone if he shall ask an egg will he give him his if ye being evil by nature know how to give good things to children how much more shall God our heavenly father give good things to you 
good things to all that ask him and so we know according as his divine power he has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue and then he says in verse 4 he says whereby a given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is the world through loss we're coming to number three here number three here the pastures of the sheep of the shepherd the pastures he leadeth me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters he leadeth me beside the still waters any shepherd in israel knew this that the sheep are normally afraid of turbulent water and sometimes out of fear they rush into that a turbulent river and they're swept away and they lose their lives because of that the uh, shepherd will go ahead of the sheep and will look for still, cool, restful, flowing river that will not endanger the lives of the sheep. And the same thing, the Lord is looking at us. He knows your nature. He knows your temperament. He knows what you want to are cut out for and nothing beyond your strength will come your way. He will not give you a ministry you cannot handle. He will not give you a family you cannot provide for. He will not give you a servant that you cannot walk along with because he leads me beside still waters. He leadeth me beside still waters and then maketh me to lie down in green pasture. Look at uh, John chapter 10 and we're reading from verse 9. In verse 9 in John chapter 10 verse 9, I am the door by me if any man enter in he shall be saved. I didn't hear your amen. amen and shall go in and out and find pasture that he is as he calls you he calls you to salvation he calls you and you become the sheep of the shepherd then he says as you are saved you have entered in through the door of grace you have entered in through the door of repentance and faith in christ now he says after that set you it in your mind you will go out and go in and you'll find pasture yeah. you'll find nourishment yeah. dryness unsatisfied and hunger will not happen to you in Jesus name. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, he said, The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am calm. Look at this. You know, sometimes when some things happen uh, to some believers, a Christian, and something great is stolen away from them ministry stolen away from them and then even their heart even their courage even their confidence self-confidence stolen away from them even the ability the ability to go on and to pursue and to possess that ability is taken away from them then they say well that's how god wants it they don't understand there's a devil behind the door a jealous devil an evil devil an envious devil he wants to steal whenever anything is stolen away from you don't say god took it away from me you will take that thing back yeah. and then it says and to kill it's not the devil is not interested in just uh, killing somebody in the physical if he can kill you in the inner man if he can kill every courage you have and every every uh, kind of con uh, confidence you have he kills the man when he has killed the spirit then he leaves the body like an empty carcass and he says okay if you can walk go ahead 
ahead and go and walk out. I've killed the real sin that brings life. You will not kill that in your life. Because Christ says, He came to steal and to kill and to destroy. He says, I am come. I am come. If you allow Him to come into your life as the mighty warrior, allow Him to come into your life as the life giver. I am come that they might have life. New life. Eternal life. Mighty life unconquerable life a life that is resilient that whatever comes your way you are able to stand you will stand by gone the days of going before the enemy and saying i am sorry well please grant me little chance will not beg the enemy anymore because he leadeth me and he maketh me he will make you what you ought to be in jesus name and it says and they shall have that life more abundantly uh, come back to that john chapter 10 verse 3 in verse 3 look at what he's saying it says to him the potter openeth to him the lord is looking for you and then when you come that's him that's him open the door for him the lord will open the door for you it says hey, to him the potter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice and he calleth his own by name and leadeth them out and then he tells us in verse 4 it says in verse 4 and when he put it forth his own sheep he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice you will know his voice yeah. i don't know who is speaking tells me to do this but i don't know you will know if you have been talking to him every day if you have been hearing him every day if he has been directing you every day if he has been instructing teaching and guiding you every day now today you're familiar with his voice now that's the way he speaks he doesn't speak like a stormy ocean a still small voice and elijah realized god is talking and he wrapped himself with that and then god said elijah what are you doing here he knew who was asking the question and he answered when he speaks you will hear you will answer for they know his voice then in verse 5 it says and a stranger will they not follow but will flee from him for they know not the voice of strangers uh, there are people that ruin uh, their ministries and they ruin uh, their families by advice 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 and they do not understand the stranger is speaking and because they do not know a stranger is speaking uh, they take every voice as the voice of god and the voice is going to ruin their family it's going to scatter separate their family and it's going to ruin their business you will not hear you will not listen you will not attend to the voice of the stranger in your life in jesus name in john chapter 16 i'm reading from verse 13 it says how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth and he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and i will show you it will show me it will show me things to come let's come to point number two here number two we're looking at the privilege and protection of the righteous sheep we're coming to psalm uh, 23 and we're looking at verse 3 he restores my soul he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake and then in verse 4 it says yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i 
will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, what do they do? They comfort me. Look at that. I will fear no evil. Fear makes the speaker not to speak. Fear makes the athlete not to run. Fear makes the provider for the house not to have appetite to eat. Fear paralyzes a man, a woman. He knows that's the way to go. He knows that the direction to go, but fear will ground him. And so the sheep of the shepherd said, the Lord is my shepherd. What have I got to fear? Is the one that controls heaven and earth. What have I got to fear? Is the one that controls evil Satan and Satan cannot go beyond his appointed territory. It's the one that controls all the shores of the ocean of the world that they cannot cross that shore. And that Lord that controls heaven and earth, men and women, angels and demons, and the Lord who is in charge in control of everything and everyone on earth, and he has taken my life, is deeply interested in me, is interested in my success, is interested in my I'm moving on and achieving what he has called me to achieve. The Lord is my shepherd. I will fear no evil. You will fear no evil. Yeah. Oh, they say, don't, don't talk, you know, about the goodness of the Lord, what he's doing publicly, because there are some people there, if they hear, they will overturn the goodness of God in your life. Impossible. I said impossible. Yeah. You know that what the Lord wants to achieve through your life, through your ministry, through your church, He has already written it down. He said, I walk and no man can hinder him. The Lord will be with you, yeah. the Lord will sustain you. And I will fear no evil. Now, how do you overcome fear? Do what you feared to do. If you are afraid to go out, get up and go out. If you are afraid to preach, rise up and preach. If you are afraid to pursue the calling of God upon your life, Look at that fear in the face and arise and do it. And when that spirit of fear knows that you have the spirit of faith, the spirit of fear discovers in your life you have the spirit of faith, that spirit will clear out of your way. Yeah. A foreign spirit, an evil spirit, not allowed to enter into your personality that thing will have to vanish away yeah. you know when two boys are playing they open their eyes and they, they look at the first one to blink and then they keep their eyes open and this one is feeling some discomfort in the you know in the ball and they oh, I catch you. You are the first one to blink. The spirit of fear and the spirit of faith. One stands there, one stands there. And then we'll say we're going to look at the first one to blink. The spirit of faith will not give over to the spirit of fear. Yeah. That thing will blink and that thing will vanish away. Yeah. You have the victory. Why are you there? The Lord confirm it to your life. Yeah. And there are three things we're looking at here. Number one, the restoration to the path of righteousness. Number two, the restfulness in places of restlessness. And number three, the rod of his power for our rescue let's look at number one number one is the restoration to the path of righteousness it tells us in uh, 
Verse 3, it says, He restoreth my soul. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. There is restoration. Hey, look at uh, Psalm 51. I'm reading from verse 12. It says, Restore unto me, restore unto me, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Do you remember when you were born again and you came? came to know the Lord, the joy that came to your heart, the peace, restore unto me the peace of thy salvation. Do you remember the peace you had when Christ, the Prince of Peace, entered into you and you were saved? Do you remember the confidence in your salvation, the confidence you had when you were saved? Do you remember the victory you had, the victory? tree of salvation when the Lord came and took over your life and then as the days go by and you were looking at circumstances rather than looking at the Christ who has saved you then the joy began to decrease and the peace and the victory and the assurance and the confidence and so the man now is praying and he's saying restore unto me the joy I used to have the peace I used to have the victory of salvation I used to have restoration today in your life in Jesus name and then if the joy of salvation can be restored the purity of sanctification can also be restored do you remember when you were first sanctified and made holy and the Lord purified your heart it's like you know you are walking on the air it's like you know the whole world you looked at the world and everything is like just a little thing and you looked at heaven and heaven was very near that that we had the purity and the partnership and the serenity and the security of that sanctification experience restore unto me the purity of that sanctification do you remember that baptism in the holy ghost when the lord immersed you and you shall receive power after that the holy ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and judea and samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth do you remember when that power came in and then you went out everywhere you could not trace the, the, the kind of vision you have and the kind of passion you had restore unto me the passion and the power of the Holy Ghost restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit and then it says in verse 13 it says then well, I teach, restore unto me, Lord, I want some joy. I want some peace. I want some confidence. I want some assurance. I want the early power I used to have. I want some zeal. I want those things to give me those days. And as I have that and restores that unto me, then will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Restoration for everyone this morning in Jesus' name. In Micah chapter 7, and I'm reading here from verse 18. Micah chapter 7 verse 18. Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity and passeth by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. He retaineth not his anger forever because he delighteth in mercy. He delighteth in mercy. Come this morning and mercy in abundance multiplied will come to your heart in Jesus name in verse 19 verse 19 says he will turn again he will have compassion upon us it will subdue our iniquity and thou wilt cast all their sins into the depths of the sea will not float will go to the depths of the sea 
and you will not remember them anymore and heaven will not remember them anymore it will as it restores you it renews your life in Ephesians chapter 4 reading from verse 23 Ephesians chapter 4 reading from verse 23 and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and be renewed when you are renewed in the spirit of your mind you will not think discouragement uh -uh, you'll be renewed you'll not think failure you'll not think defeat you'll not think impossibility be renewed in the spirit of your mind when he restores you and he renews you and he replenish your life and he revives your life and you're renewed in the spirit of your mind all the thinking i cannot i will not i must not i'm a failure i'm a disappointment uh -uh, you're renewed this morning all those uh, negative utterances about you about yourself everything will vanish away then in verse 24 in verse 24 and that she put on the new man and that she put on the new man now if you have the old clothes on you no matter all the confession you made i'm clean i'm new i'm all right you still feel like you're not acceptable because you have the old clothes remove the old clothes and put on the new clothes and then look at the mirror and see how it looks on you in the mirror and then you'll go out with confidence and faith and you go out with a kind of heart that knows i put on in your dress now he says put on the new man put on christ the one that knows no failure the one that knows no negative confession put on christ put on the new man which after god is created in righteousness and true holiness amen, amen. for you amen. for me amen. things will no longer be the same in your life in jesus name amen. Look at number two here. Number two here is the restfulness in places of restlessness. We go around in different parts of the world and we experience, we see restlessness all around, insecurity all around, and we see violence all around, and it appears, what are we going to do? Because there is restlessness everywhere, but the Lord will give you rest yeah. in your heart in your soul there will be peace yeah. when it appears there's trouble there and you have to go through that place that's the only road that gets you to where you are going the angel of god will go before you yeah. you will not panic there will be no restlessness in your spirit because yea though i walk through the valley or the shadow of death understand it's not the valley of death it's the valley of the shadow of death you know the difference the shadow of a sword cannot kill the shadow of a gun cannot kill the shadow of an enemy can do nothing the shadow after all you have your shadow and sometimes as you are walking your shadow falls on another person not nothing to that person your shadow the shadow of a boxer the shadow of a wrestler the shadow of an evil person the shadow of witches and wizards the shadow of all those people on earth it's only their shadow. The Lord will not allow their power to come near you. Yeah. But the Lord wants you to see that he's by your side. And he's protecting you. That's why he makes you to see the shadow. And then you say, praise the Lord is the shadow of a lion. Praise the Lord is the picture of an animal. Praise the Lord is the shadow of the picture of an injurious thing only the shadow you will see and so yea though i walk through i'll walk through i said i'll walk through you know something can i go through this yes you can 
Will I go through this? Yes, you will. Look at the things happening. Look at the storm. Look at the danger. Look at the difficulty. Can I go through this? You will go through. Yeah. I am going through. And going through is not a forever journey. Crossing the river is not a forever journey. That problem in your family, can I go through this one? It's not a forever thing. Today, the Lord will bring solution. Yeah. Because ye, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil. Look at Psalm 138. I'm reading from verse 7. In Psalm 138, verse 7, though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou will revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. Thy right hand shall save me. When you are in trouble, sometimes the fear of what may come after that will make you to forget even how to pray. How do I pray now? What do I say now? Look at this scene so near. Open to this. Psalm 138, verse 7. And just say these words. That becomes your prayer. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, Thou wilt revive me, and thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. Look at verse 8, and make this your prayer. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Say that again. Anything of interest to you. Anything that comes to your life. And if that thing affects your life negatively, your life will be turned up upside down. And then you say, the Lord will. Not that he may, he's going to do it. I said he's going to do it. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hand. The Lord will not forsake you. Yeah. Matthew chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 28. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, some people say that is talking to those who are not born again, they are not saved. And so Christ is saying, Come unto me. I don't think there's any limitation there. If you are laboring and you are heavy laden, if there is a heavy load on your heart, if there is a heavy load on your mind and something that you think, this load might crush me, the Lord is inviting you this morning, come, you'll have rest. Problem, tears, agony, anguish, come, he will give you rest. Come unto me. All ye, all, all ye, you are saved and you have heavy load. You are saved and you have a heavy body. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And then in verse 29, it says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls and then in verse 30 it says my yoke is easy my yoke is easy my yoke is easy uh, there are times like moses people come to the lord and they say lord it's too heavy for me i cannot bear the burden of these people kill me take me away and the lord says no you don't need killing you need reviving and the Lord will revive you. Here comes Elijah. And Elijah said, Lord, you're seeking after my life. 
They've killed all the prophets. And um, God said, no, Elijah, you don't have all the information. I still have 7,000 men that have not bowed their knees unto Baal. What you need is bread and water from heaven. And the Lord sent an angel and fed him. And then he drank. And then he said, go in the strength of the Lord. And he went in the strength of that meal, of that food, 40 days. And he was not tired. Tiredness taken away from you your life my yoke is easy and my body is light hebrews chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 11 hebrews chapter 4 and we're reading from verse 11 let us therefore labor to enter into that rest lest any man fail fall after the same example of unbelief let's come to number three here number three here the rod of his power for our rescue look at psalm 23 verse 4 ye though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for thou art with me Emmanuel is with you the God of heaven is with you the deliverer mighty deliverer is with you for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me when I see the sheep is seen when I see that rod in the hands of the shepherd I have comfort why because is that rod that will fight the lion fight the bear fight the beast of the field it is not to crush it is not to destroy the sheep it is to defend the sheep the rod of the almighty god will defend you he tells us in Psalm 110, Psalm 110, in verse 2, The Lord shall send the rod of thy strength the rod of thy strength out of zion rule thou in the midst of thine enemies see the egyptian army coming with their chariots and here were the children of israel they just came out of egypt and then they cried and said are we you have brought us here to destroy us this is what was seen. Let's serve the Egyptians. They wanted to be slaves again. You'll never be slaves again in your life. And then the Lord said, Moses, what's that in your hand? And he said, a rod. <laughs> Why are you crying then? There are times to stop crying and we start acting. We stop praying and we start acting. Stretch forth that rod and you stretch forth the rod and then the sea parted for them. The rod of the strength of God will open the sea before you. And as the children of Israel passed over uh, the sea, then the Egyptians said, what an Israelite can do, an Egyptian can do. Pharaoh, no sir, doesn't work that way. What a man can do, a woman can do. No, my sister, it's only when you have the rod in your hand. And what uh, this, what Paul can do, then we know that, you know, I can do also. It's only when you have the rod. And so the Egyptians said, pursue. And they pursued. And when they came to the middle of the sea, God said, Moses, what's that in your hand again? It's the rod, the rod of God. The rod of Moses became the rod of God. And he said, stretch it forth, and the sea closed over on them. And they saw those enemies never again. I will fear no evil. Thy rod and thy staff they comfort me and the rod of the lord will comfort you in your life in jesus name we're well, looking we're well, looking here at verse 3 it says in verse 3 thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning thou hast the dew of thy youth youthfulness will come back to your life 
look at Psalm 91. I'm reading from verse 9. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Then in verse 10, there shall no evil before you. That's your confession today. That's your confession every day. There shall no evil before you. Neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 18. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 18. It says, And the Lord shall deliver me. Say it for yourself. From every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever Amen. we come to point number three here point number three we're looking at psalm 23 verses 5 and 6 our progress into the paradise of rapturous splendor in verse 5 that prepares the table before me in the presence of mine enemies thou anointest my head with oil my cup my cup my cup my cup, cup runneth over verse 6 it says in verse 6 surely goodness and mercy shall follow me demons will not follow me yeah. evil spirits will say it for yourself evil spirit will not follow me bad luck will not follow me injurious people will not follow me regular yearly accident will not follow me poverty will not follow me the fear of man will not follow me surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life people say when i was when i was very young you know every door just opened when i was younger in the ministry younger in the faith when i was younger you know success provision money finance good things just followed me but now as i'm getting older all those things don't follow anymore maybe because i cannot fast the way i used to fast in the good olden days uh -uh. all the days of your life goodness and mercy as long as there is a god who does good in heaven as long as there's a god of all mercy in heaven goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i you know the devil is very tricky the devil will say and whisper in your ears jumping up and down preaching here preaching there casting out devils here subduing that relieving that having this project what if at the end of time after doing all this and all that you don't get to heaven and then people say it's true what if after all this laboring walking rising early sleeping late writing preaching evangelizing edifying the church what if eventually i don't get your heaven surely somebody says surely uh, how, even even a human being uh, you have a diligent worker a skilled worker is always there and he serves with all the ounce of energy in his life and then he comes to the end of his profession and you happen to be the leader or you happen to be the director 
when the fellow has served you more than he served himself at the end of life will you abandon him if ye being evil know how to do good things such people how much more God the Lord will reward you yeah. surely surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever me and God me and God will live in the same house forever yeah. let not your hearts be troubled not that before you believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, how many mansions? If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for for them, for you. He told his disciples that, and he's telling us that, he's telling you that, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will not send an angel to come and, you know, escort you home. I myself, I will come, and you will leave me, so that where I am, where are you? There you will be also. I will see you in heaven. Yeah. Heaven will be your final home. Yeah. After serving the Lord faithfully here, He cannot abandon you at the point of death, at the point of the rapture. He's going to take you home. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever three things number one the overflowing cup of his peculiar people number two the ever-present companions of the purified pilgrims number three the everlasting comfort in his perfect paradise look at number one number one is the overflowing cup for his peculiar people. In Psalm 23 verse 5, that prepares the table before me. In the presence of mine enemies, thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. The anointing will not fail in your life. The anointing that breaks the yoke. The anointing that drives the enemy away from the path of your progress. That anointing will not dry up in your life in Jesus' name. He prepares a table before you in the very presence of your enemies. And he will anoint your head with heavenly oil and your cup were run over look at some 30 some 31 verse 19 oh how great is thy goodness which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men then in verse 20 it says in verse 20 thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues in titus chapter 2 verse 14 the peculiar people of the lord who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works you'll be peculiar yeah. even satan will look at you and say this one is peculiar you can't touch this one the demons will look at you and say this one is peculiar it's not like every deacon harry are you like every deacon harry 
in the sight of God, in the mind of God, and with the favor of God upon your life, you'll not be like a Dick and Harry. Dick and Harry. It says you'll be a peculiar person, zealous of good works. And the anointing that he gives will abide in your life, overflow in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Isaiah chapter 10, reading from verse 27, and it shall come to pass in that day that his body shall be taken away from off thy shoulders and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing anointing in your ministry he anoints my head with oil and my cup runneth over. Look at number two here. Number two, the ever present companions of purified pilgrims. Ever present, always there. It says in the first part of Psalm 23, verse 6, it says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I'll not get tired Amen. yourself. I'll not get weary. I'll not get fagged out, fatigued. I will not faint. I will not fall. I will not falter. I will not give up. Because goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life good good things will follow you yeah. you will always see the hand of the lord in your ministry yeah. in your profession yeah. in your family yeah. because the word of god is greater than the enemy outside and it says goodness and mercy shall follow who follow who Me. like your shadow follows you goodness will follow you yeah. and mercy will follow you yeah. you know sometimes you're walking and you're, it's like you're hearing some steps and you look back there you only see goodness as you look back there yeah. sometimes you're walking and then it's like somebody there uh -uh, mercy is there and even when you are walking fast, goodness and mercy will walk fast after you. Yeah. The Lord will show you a revelation of that today. Yeah. As mercy from nowhere will come. Goodness from nowhere will come. Yeah. Then you will remember, that's what he said, that surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life all the days of your life come to number three here number three is the everlasting comfort in his perfect paradise look at this and i will dwell in the house of the lord how long i will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And the beggar died and he was taken by the angels and taken to the bosom of Abraham. And the rich man died also and he lifted up his eyes in hell. And then he saw father Abraham on the other side and said, Father Abraham, Send Lazarus that he may dip his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. And Abraham said, Son, remember, thou in thy lifetime you thought you could live without Christ, without grace, without salvation, only with religion, and you didn't have what it takes to come over here. 
And Lazarus had his own time of problem. Now you are tormented and he is comforted. The comfort, the comfort that you're going to have on that final day. And you have it over and over all the years, millions and trillions of years forever. And beside that, there's a goal fixed between you and I so that the people wanting to come from there to this place can not and those who want to pass from here to you cannot the comfort of Lazarus forever and the torment of that rich man without grace without godliness without goodness and without the righteousness of grace the torment of that man will be forever and ever now here is the rich man here is Lazarus let everybody kill behind them which kill do you belong to do you want to kill behind you that man, the rich man who in hell will lift up his eyes and say he is tormented in this flame and that will be forever and ever. Or do you want to do you want to kill behind Lazarus who had tasted the grace of God, had tasted the goodness of God, had tasted the godliness that God brings and then now he is comforted and forever and forever he will be comforted. Make your choice as for me and my house where will serve the Lord. As for me and my members where will serve the Lord. As for me, let to me alone, I choose the right way. I choose the way of the cross. I choose the way of grace. I choose the way of salvation. Here is where I stand and Satan will not take me away from the hand of God. Your final day will be a day of comfort. Yeah. Your final life will be a life of comfort. And your eternity, when you get over there to the perfect paradise, it will be a place of comfort for you in Jesus' name. And as you come and you follow the Lord and you take his yoke upon you and you become a sheep in his pasture. And you can say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want then from now until eternity. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever I will be there I will see you there and we shall dwell together in the house of the Lord how long a hundred years a thousand years a million years a trillion years on and on and on it will never end. Yeah. Come to the Lord now. Stay with the Lord now. Abide in the Lord now. Continue with the Lord now. And then the end will soon come. I'll be there. I'll be there. Rise up and pray. And tell the Lord, I will be there.